Okay, so welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. Instead of solving a problem, I like to go over a little bit of the discussion specifically for reflections of points over the linear function, linear equation y equals mx plus b, where m and b are both constants. So as you learn from algebra typically is that whenever you perform such reflections, you want to actually set the slope using this point slope or the slope intercept form such that we form a perpendicular. So in other words, the slope is just the negative reciprocal. And then afterwards performing using as said those two formulas, the slope intercept or the point slope. But also if you want to, um, to maintain the same distance as it's a reflection over that same line, that the distance has to be equal to the same from whatever that line is being um, flipped over. So that's where, you know, the midpoint formula comes in handy when you use that. So that all makes sense that I'm sure everybody knows about, but there's actually a different way that I think this is going to be a little bit of a fun twist that I think is going to be interesting. We're actually going to do that sort of finding a transformation, but using linear algebra and specifically we will actually be using matrices into our little, um, as our little tool in order to find such transformations of the vectors. So how this video is going to outline is that I'm actually going to write down the steps that we're actually going to perform and I'll go into detail one by one using words and then afterwards we'll actually get into the math and then eventually we will find that such uh, transformation vectors that we'll be using with, you know, using matrices. So, so kind of a fun twist if you ask me, so why don't we actually um, just get to the meat. Okay, so I wrote down all the steps here. So we have five different steps that we need to perform. So keep in mind that for some standard Cartesian coordinate from this plane, x, y can be represented as a vector for magnitude and direction. And in order to actually perform this step, for perform all this, find that such transformation that we need to do with matrices, we actually need to do this so that our standard y equals mx plus b becomes a just the x axis itself then we can actually reflect it over that x-axis, but simply just replace the switch the signs of the y-coordinates. But we have to go back and return to the original plane. So we actually, there comes the, the counterclockwise uh, rotation matrix that we will be using. So as again, as mentioned that we become, we make it become an x-axis. So that's why we have the standard clockwise rotation matrix over here. Then going all the way to the last step, going back after performing to, when you return to the original plane, you just have to put back the, uh, translate back vertically by however many units you put it back as standard. So to put this in simply, I'll read out all the steps to you one more time. So if you, um, if you get the gist, you can skip to the next part of where the math you know, the map symbols comes in, but I'll read it out to you one more time. So if you want to get the gist of everything. So we want to translate vertically by negative B units so that Y equals MX plus B becomes Y prime equals M times X prime. That's the new line. So keep in mind, don't get that confused as a derivative. So we can actually just subtract using the following vector zero B is a column vector over there, column matrix rather. Then as said that we need to put this so that the new line becomes an x-axis so that's where the rotation matrix comes in. So cosine data, negative sine data, sine data, and cosine data. So you also want to keep in mind that it actually forms with the angle data of the positive x-axis where indeed with the substitution m equals tangent data. So by performing this, performing the rotating clockwise with this angle data, so this will now become the new x. This will now become a new line aka the x-axis. So now we can just reflect the points over that X axis. Simply, we can just replace, switch the signs of the Y coordinates. So that's why we can multiply by this um, matrix over here, one, zero, zero, negative one. Then after that, with that reflection done, we can now actually go back and return to the original plane that we are trying to you know, achieve. Then as said, use the counterclockwise rotation matrix over here, cosine data, sine data, negative sine data, and cosine data. And so now we're back to the original plane. Now you just gotta go back one more time and just translate back vertically by B units. So however, we started with negative B, now go back to where you start and just add that same vector zero B again. So after all that stuff, um, now let's actually get to the real math. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to write the vector x, y, and then of course this arrow is to denote like this transformation. So step one is we're going to actually subtract um, b units, translate vertically by negative b units. So we start off with our same vector x, y, then we subtract, so zero b. So let me actually, I'm going to each step write that as a justification. So this is step number one. Step number two, x, y, and then becomes. So now we actually multiply with the rotation matrix. So cosine data, then negative sine data over here, sine data here, positive, and then cosine data. And this is being multiplied by this matrix over here that we're performing, x, y, 
then subtract 0b, and then now that's step two. And now step number three, so we want to perform that reflection over that x-axis, so now let's multiply the one zero, zero, negative one, and then multiply by this entire thing over here. Okay, so that's step three. Now step number four is, of course, we want to go back to the original plane. So now we just have to multiply by the counterclockwise rotation matrix. So here, cosine theta, this is sine theta. Then now we have negative sine theta over here and then cosine theta and then multiply by everything you see from step three. And then lastly, step number five is just translate that back to um, however many units, B units. So we just add this. Um, at the vector 0b. So now that's the same, that's pretty much the last step. So now let's actually perform all the math over here. So I have step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, all that on. Now we reach towards the pinnacle over here. So now this is where we actually do the algebra. So right over here, let's first perform the matrix multiplication over here for um, cosine, negative sine, sine theta, and then one, zero, zero, one, which this is actually not that difficult. And if you're wondering how multi matrix multiplication works for anybody new, you take, a you take this column vector over here and then you rotate it so that it multiplies it here. So everything for one is multiplied from this column and then zero is multiplied to this column. And then you add, and then you add those together to get your new entry. And then you do the same thing for the other one. So performing all this, we're gonna get that. So I'll start off one by one. So I'll have that performing all this out. We'll have cosine theta, then multiply with sine theta, sine theta over here, and then negative cosine theta. So we multiply this out with this uh, matrix over here, cosine theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, and cosine theta. So now this will actually now become the new matrix so let's see, do the same thing again, and then we'll get the following matrix over here. So we'll have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Then over here, this is gonna be two sine theta, cosine theta, top matrix is the same thing, two sine theta, cosine theta. And then lastly over here, this is gonna be sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. Okay. And so from here, so here are some identities that we can actually use to substitute here. So I'm gonna write just um, some notes over here. I have the room here. We know that two sine theta cosine theta is going to equal to sine of two theta. And then for cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is going to equal to cosine of two theta. And so with this, we can actually perform that substitution. So let's actually put that back here. So putting this, this is we have the new substitution over here. This is going to be cosine two theta, then sine two theta. Next is going to be sine two theta. And then lastly, in the bottom entry is gonna be negative cosine two theta. So that simplifies that out, um, everything for here, and well, these three matrices over here. So now, it's left, that, so now what's left is that we just need to multiply to everything over here. So let me actually make some room. Now, so far that we actually did perform the matrix multiplication for these three matrices over here. So now all we have to do is let's actually multiply it to this matrix over here, right here, I should put it right here, of x, y, and then subtract zero, b. So the distribution actually sats right here, stay, stay. So, Performing all this so far, x, y, so um, distributing that, we're just gonna leave that the way it is. As for this one, so this is actually gonna come down to the following matrix. So we distribute cosine two theta, all these entries back into zero B. So now we'll get that this is gonna be B multiplied by sine of two theta. And then for the bottom, we have negative B times cosine of two theta. And then we add this back with uh, zero B from that translating vertically entry. Now here's um, one more rule that we're gonna be using. So continuing on with the identity and also using the fact that M equals tangent data from, ang from the angle data being formed, we know that from the substitution, um, sine two data is going to equal to two M divided by one plus M squared. And then cosine two data, data is gonna equal one minus M squared divided by one plus M squared. So from that, we can actually use some substitutions to um, simplify some things out over here. So now what this comes down to is x, y becomes this new uh, transformation. So if I perform everything out and I do the simplification, we're gonna have the following. So I have one divided by one plus m squared. 
then multiply with the entries over here, one minus M square. This is two M, two M, and then M square minus one over here. Okay, and then next is of course being multiplied by X times Y. Then we're gonna have that this is subtract C and then divided by one plus M square. Then we multiply this by two M and then M square minus one. Then add this with, well, okay, I wrote this one, this is supposed to be B. And then add this with the matrix of zero B. Okay, and so we can actually simplify this even further one last time. So this is over here. If you actually perform um, the distribution, but also just so you get a common denominator for this one, so that actually eliminates this entry out to um, come back into here. So now the final actually transformation it comes down to is therefore the um, set of vector, tra the transformation of vectors comes down to the following. So this is gonna be, so x, y is going to equal to one divided by one plus m squared. So the transformation is, so everything here is still the same for now. 2m, 2m, m squared minus one and multiply with, with x, y. Then the simplification comes down to 2b, then divided by one plus m squared. Then we multiply this by negative m and then positive one. And so therefore the transformation is indeed this fine, this set of transformation indeed is this in box, just like that. So I hope this is actually a new um, perspective that you guys learned that I thought this was actually interesting personally myself. So one way to look at it algebraically, but also another way to look through it through a linear algebra aspect. I know I used the word algebra in there twice, but you know, it's cool. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.